I'm fascinated by the title of this book. How can a young man today unleash her power, have a fulfilling career, and still be the world's greatest man? Hmm. Well, I'm honored to be here with you today. I'm delighted to attend this man to man support initiative workshop to share with you an experience or two on how to become the person you have always wanted to be. So I ask you, what if you started to consciously design your life so that you could achieve more of your goals and become the person you have always wanted to be? My advice would be keep stepping forward like this. Rubbing minds is always a valuable experience. And I hope today's mind rubbing will be mutually rewarding and beneficial to how my life and career have unfolded. I'm certain that what I have to say today will bear witness to the often heard saying, success is the good fortune that comes from aspiration, desperation, perspiration, and inspiration. I strongly, I strongly believe that mom to mom support initiatives, main cause and vision is to add a value to the life of its community and help you use your powers and potentials by delivering on what is the most important message of all, that of self-growth. And this puts mom to mom in the company of great minds like Ralph Waldo Emerson. American philosopher, naturalist, who reminds us that our chief want in life is somebody who makes us do what we can. While another genius, Albert Einstein, cautions us against trying to become a person of success rather than a person of value, a person of worth. Now, ladies, how is it going so far? Things may come to those who wait, but only the things left by those who hustle. I mean, are you accomplishing what you thought you would be in life so far? I hope you are all on the path of amazing achievement. Or do some of you have your fingers crossed yet still? So, which are you? Are you seeking to become a woman of just success rather than a woman of value. You and I know that no matter how good or bad your situation has been, you can do better, much better. Unfortunately, the vast majority of us don't take the time to plan for our future and we are simply chugging along with our heads down, similar to the pattern pattern of our scandalous national life, about which we do absolutely nothing but talk endlessly. So instead of focusing our time and energy on finding solutions to our many problems, nationally and as individuals, we just seem only to repeat the same outlook, same approach, same strategies, ad nausea. Repeating the very same groaning and whining and more pontificating day over and again. Is it any surprise that we get the same results? I know that you start out analyzing your personal life, like our social and political situation with best intentions. You determine this year would be different, I'm sure. But somewhere along the journey, you lose focus and drop the ball. Then find it your uh, and then find yourself having to play catch up. It happens to the best of us. So, what's your strategy when your back is up against the wall? When you're where you don't want to be, facing a setback you can well do without. Check out the following well tried and proven five point game plan for crushing your goals quickly and staging your comeback. This is an ironclad strategy for swiftly and skillfully extricating, repositioning, and redeeming yourself. Rule number one, 
refuse to die. Those with the character to triumph in the end tend not to allow the dignity of failure to force them down. A comeback or redemption at such disaster laughs in its face and crawls to her feet again. When you're down, other people will write you off. Do not let them define you. Rule number two, <clears throat> decide to fight. A fighting spirit and comeback have an inner sense of justice that refuses to be violated. Whenever you experience a setback in any area of your life, keep a cool head. Remember to stay calm, control your breath, and you will gain control over your emotions. Remind yourself of where you've been and why you are here, and resolve that nothing will stop you. You are unstoppable. You are limitless. Manage your darkest fears by doing something about them. Take massive action. And if you don't succeed at first, plot, plot, plot again. Rule number three. Get mad. Get mad. Get crazy. Pain, failure, loss, and embarrassment are such great motivators, and you should allow adversity to force your hand to make new choices and take new actions. They say every disappointment is a blessing in disguise. Don't worry about being disappointed. You rise from the ashes like Phoenix. Use the pain as fuel that drives your comeback, because if you do not, it will become the fuel that perpetuates your current situation. Rule number four, get creative. The savvy fighter won't make the same mistake twice. She accepts the hard rules of the real world, analyzes how she wound up on, the, on her back, and charts her course around the problem. Often as not, she turns trouble to her advantage as she chooses to see every situation as an opportunity for a second chance rather than a setback. Now, part of being creative is knowing that for every problem, there's always a solution, always a way out, always a way through, always a way around, and always a way for you to come out on top. That point is worth repeating. There's always a solution. There's always a way out. Always a way through. Always a way around. And always a way for you to come on top. Remember that. Rule number five. Focus on results. Once you're on your way, don't look back. And do not allow a previous faux pas to slow you down. A hundred distractions, doubts, and setbacks will haunt someone recovering from disaster. The true champion, and you are champions. The superwoman rolls with the punches and keeps coming back for more. The ultimate reward for the person making the comeback is to see her vision come to life in the real world. And she enjoys the deep confidence of one who has fought her way through hell and emerged to see the stars twinkling, sparkling. Your challenge, therefore, is to do just that. You must look at every obstacle, setback, rejection, and constraint as an opportunity to redeem yourself and to step up your game. If you're serious about redeeming yourself, if you're serious about success and making this the very best year of your life, you need also a radically different approach. Meditation. <coughs> Research. Reading. Become what my old friend and mentor, the late Professor Ayobusha used to call me, a bibliophile. A fancy name for a book lover. 
in celebration of the mom-to-mom -mom community and the International Women's Day this month, I'd like to take the opportunity to underscore how to get even more accomplished in your life's journey by inviting you to get a copy of my book. I think you've heard about it, or maybe you haven't. Just to share by Taiwa Jai Haiso. I can assure you of a good read of a portrait, a portrait of a hardcore goal-setting journalist delivering radical results painstakingly. Read it and let's, let me know what you think. And finally, I'd like to summarize this talk with a hearty salute to common sense. Anna, these are things we need to get success. We must have these virtues. Common sense, honor, integrity, clarity, discernment, sensitivity, and humanity. All attributes of an enduring success. With this story, I read somewhere about a blind boy. A blind boy sat on a footstep, on the steps of a building, with a heart by his feet. He held up a sign which said, I am blind. Please help. There were only a few coins in the heart. A man was walking by. He took a few coins from his pocket and dropped them into the heart. He then took the sign, turned it round and wrote some words. He put the sign back so that everyone who walked by would see their new words. Soon the heart began to fill up. A lot more people were giving money to the blind boy. Oh. That afternoon, the man who had changed the sign came to see how things were. Follow through, follow up. The boy recognized his footsteps and asked, were you the one who changed my sign this morning? What did you write? The man said, I only wrote the truth. I said what you said, but in a different way. I wrote, today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see it. Both signs told people that the boy was blind, oh. but the first sign simply said the boy was blind. The second sign reminded people how fortunate they were to have their sight. Oh. Should we be surprised that the second sign was more effective? Oh. Consider this story, because it encapsulates everything I have been saying about the way to success, peace of mind, <coughs> self-worth. Oh. Moral of the story, be thankful for what you have. Yeah. Be creative, be innovative, mm -hmm. think differently from the herd and positively. When life gives you a hundred reasons to cry, show life that you have 1,000 reasons <laughs> to smile. Mm -hmm. Face your past without regret. Handle your present with confidence. Prepare for the future without fear. Mm. Keep the faith and drop the fear. It's a beautiful thing to see a person smiling. But even more beautiful is knowing that you are the reason for the smile. Be a person of value. Let's make a world where this little person really counts. Let's guarantee everybody a basic courtesy and kindness. Faith is not about everything being turning out okay. Faith is about being okay, no matter how things turn out. As I said earlier, things may come to those who wait, but they're, they're only the things left by those who hustle. As the Dalai Lama once said, in order to carry a positive action, we must develop here a positive mission. Thank you for making me part of the mom-to-mom -mom community. And a happy International Day to you all.